Hello everyone. Welcome to a new video lecture for Calculus 3. We're starting chapter 14, Multivariate Functions. So let's just jump right into it. I think that there's not a lot to talk about besides the problems themselves. So 141004. I have g of x comma y. And so the only difference here, multivariate means that you have Instead of just g of x, you have g of x comma y. So g of x and y. Uh, and this is equal to cosine of x plus 4y. It's kind of interesting because you're using x and y within your domain. And so in a way, your range is z values. So they're going up. What they're asking for in particular in this problem is g of 4 comma negative 1. And so all you do... So you plug those in, 4 minus 4 is 0, cosine is 0 is a 1. So that's easy. Uh, they also ask, what is the domain? And this is a multiple choice kind of problem. The answer is actually going to be all real numbers uh, within the x and y plane. That's, that's a r with a double line in it and then a little square. So that means all real numbers. And that little square thing is saying um, basically the xy plane in this particular case. Okay. I didn't spell it very well, but get the idea. Okay. So that's your answer. You just click that one. The range is kind of funny. Again, I said they were z values, basically, z scores. And so. We're going up and down uh, in three dimensions, so we're going up and down. Well, if you imagine this plane here, this xy plane here, as basically like a flat line, and then you're coming up out of it with your z, what you're doing here is basically making a Cartesian plane, um, just like we normally would use for two-dimensional objects. And so I'm looking to see what the range will be for basically cosine of stuff, that stuff is just swirling around here. Uh, well, cosine does this, right? It's going from 1 to negative 1, or negative 1 to 1, essentially, including those two results. So you use the square braces. So really, this range is um, it's found from just the fact that you're talking about cosine. It's really what's going on. Okay, 14.1.1. Uh, O one one. I have f of x y is equal to ln ln of sixteen minus x squared minus sixteen y squared, and they say sketch the domain. And they got a lot of like graph stuff. It's kind of interesting because we're really just focused on this right here. Uh, remember that ln of like zero is no good. Ln of negative numbers is no good, but Ln of even a very small positive number uh, will work. Okay, so zero is going to be my cutoff line, uh, but I won't include it. It's kind of like when you do a domain of a square root, you take the inside equal to zero, same thing here, inside equals zero. Just remember to not include it um, instead of normally you do the square brace for a square root. And so. You have this right here. And I'm trying to figure out what that shape would be. What's that shape, essentially? That's a question mark. <laughs> um, I'm going to move these guys over. So 16 equals x squared plus 16y squared. And I want, I'm looking, it looks kind of like a circle, maybe. So I'm going to divide by 16 on both sides and kind of see what happens. 1 is equal to, rather, I'll put the 1 on the other end. So here we go. It's uh, x squared over 4 squared, plus 16 is going to cancel, so y squared over 1 squared equals 1. And this right here, that's an ellipse. There you go. Uh, with an x major. So, x and y. Uh, 1, 2, 3, 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. 1, 1. And you get your ellipse. Something kind of like that. So that's the ellipse shape. So that's maybe good enough for the multiple choice. 
I don't think it is, honestly, um, because I'm going to keep going. I want to keep going here. I would honestly like to try and test two different points. Like, let's just try 0, 0 with the original. Does the point 0, 0 work in here? Well, if you plug a 0 in here, you plug a 0 in there, you get LN16, so that works. Let's pick a point that's outside of here. Let's do, like, I don't know, 0, 2. I'm expecting that to be outside of it. So what about the point 0, 2? When you plug that in, 0 goes away. 2 times 16 is 32, so 16 minus 32 is a negative number. You're getting an LN negative 16, and that is no good. So that does not work. So basically, inside is good, but outside is bad. Um, but one last thing. Remember that we weren't able to include whatever we said inside equals zero. You're not supposed to include it. So a solid line for my ellipse is actually no good. What you're going to want, if I could draw it properly, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, and one, you're going to do a dashed line, a dashed line, and then you're going to fill in the inside. So all these numbers in here work. We tested a point in there. It makes sense. And then again, you can't actually use the uh, the, out, the actual rim of it because, again, that would make LN0. It looks a lot better on paper. <laughs> like, you know, physical paper with, like, a pencil and all that stuff. So 14.1.011. Didn't I just do that one? I don't know. Maybe I named them. Maybe I numbered it wrong. I don't know. Anyways, either way, <laughs> um, I got g of x, y is equal to x minus y over x plus y. Uh, and they say, again, sketch the domain. Same kind of concept here. Do I have an ln? No. Do I have a square root? No. Do I have a division? Yes. So you're going to find out whenever your bottom is equal to zero. Move over your x, I suppose, and you get this guy right here. Uh, that's actually a 45 degree line, negative 45, technically. Um, and so this is what we have so far. Again, bottom equals zero. It's not technically good to be that because then you got a division by zero, which is no good. So you're not including this, but everything else should be fine. Any other number in the denominator should be okay. Uh, it's just this part does not work. So what you really want to do is say not that 45 degree line, so not that one, but anything else should be good. Again, shaded in on either side. There you go. So that, that's your answer. It's shaded on both sides and then not including there. 141016. Um, I think they're wanting to sketch the domain again. Didn't really write that part down, but now it's a three-dimensional. Uh, I, I, it's actually technically four-dimensional, but you got three dimensions that are um, independent. And so I guess in a way you would say that this is equal to like W in the end. I don't know. Anyways, you got ln of 36 minus 9x squared minus 4y squared minus z squared. And we've already seen this. Again, you're sketching that domain. Uh, we've already seen this. Take the inside equal to zero. And then start working uh, the math. Just like last time, it kind of looks like it might be an ellipse of some kind. So move everything over. Um, divide by the 36. And so, 9 over 36 is a 4, um, so then it would be 2 squared. I don't like that 1 in the front. I'll put it in the back. 4 over 36 is a 9, which again is 3 squared. And then 36 should just be retained there, which is 6 squared uh, equals 1. So it's an ellipse. Uh, it's an ellipsoid, because again, it's three dimensions now. It's not a sphere, but it's kind of like that. Again, you can't include this because that's making that ln of zero business, which you don't want. So we're going to use the dashed lines. And then again, just like last time, you'll just fill in the inside. 
So now we're going to have to draw a three-dimensional domain. This is technically a domain here. Uh, you're going over two. Here you're going over three. And there you're going over six. One, two, three, four, five, six. And similarly on these guys as well. So make a circle kind of thing here. And then we're coming down. And then it's going to come back together. Kind of like a football, kind of. And of course you can do it this way too. Make it look more 3D, I guess. This guy comes back out. Whatever. I think that should be fine. Again though, because you can't include it, you're technically going to be doing dash marks all the way around it. Um, so just make sure that you're looking for the one with the dash marks. And then you shade on the inside. Okay. Next one. So this one actually switches up what they're uh, wanting you to do. So be careful about the wording. 141025, I got f of x, y is equal to 16 minus 4x minus 5y. And they say sketch the graph. Sketch the graph, not the domain. Uh, just be careful about that because they're all, all of a sudden changing on you midway here. Um, well, this is a plane. It's a plane. Again, you can say that's z equal to 16 minus 4x minus 5y. Uh, and you could just, if you kind of know what you're doing with planes, I guess, you can just jump to it. Uh, I'm going to show you what I do. So uh, if x equals 0 and y equals 0, solve for z. So these go both go to 0, we get z equals 16. If x equals 0 and z equals 0, solve for y. Um, so x and z both go to 0. We got a y. You move it over to make it positive. Divide by the 5. So 16 over 5, which is somewhere around 3 point something. So let me just triple check in my calculator here. 3.2. That's going to be important whenever I graph it because I need a more um, like a human answer, I suppose. Um, hold on, and then we got y equals 0, z equals 0, what is x equal to? Again, this goes to 0, that goes to 0, move the 4 over, divide by the 4 uh, again, so 16 over 4 is a 4. Okay, with these in hand, uh, when you create your plane now, x, y, and z, I go 1, 2, 3, 4, because again, what's happening at this point is that my y is equal to 0, and my z is equal to 0. And that's how I'm making that 4 happen. 1, 2, 3, and a little bit. There you go. Uh, and then we have z. It should be 16. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Okay, good enough. So way up there. And then what you do is you connect them. Now, I'm not going to be doing the very best job I can ever do here because... I'm working on a little graphing tablet, but I will try my hardest. There's that. Connect this one. And then you connect that one over there. So there's your plane. It's actually facing that way. Uh, so it's kind of hard to see from this angle. It doesn't really, you can't see it very much. Of course, it extends out forever. It's just, you know, it's kind of hard uh, to see it from that angle. So let's try it from this angle here, X, Y, Z. One, two, three, four. 1, 2, 3, and a little bit. Uh, let's just do 5, 10, 15, and a little bit. <laughs> Makes it a little bit faster. Not to scale necessarily, but that's okay. And so you can see that your plane here is facing that way towards you. See? So I just rotated the whole thing. Uh, we talked about that in previous uh, lectures and stuff. So uh, it's always handy to be able to draw it in multiple um, angles. Okay, there's your plane. And really what they often do is this uh, octant one graph where everything is positive, positive, positive. Uh, and so you're just seeing this triangle where it's intersecting within that first octant. Um, it's not, of course, this thing extends out forever and ever in all directions. A plane is just a big, large sheet of paper. 
uh, but it's easier to see from this angle. And so you can obviously uh, see what numbers they're intersecting at and just pick the right multiple choice. Okay. Another one. 14, 1, 0, 28. So I have an f of x, y is equal to 5 minus x squared minus y squared. And they say graph this thing. Some of these things are going to be easier to graph than others. I like the planes personally. This one here uh, is equally easy. You just have to recognize its basic shape. Imagine that you got rid of your y's for a little bit. What do you got here is a parabola. Imagine that you got rid of your x's for a little bit. What do you got here? It's a parabola. And both of those are upside down parabolas. And so that's really what you got here. You got an upside down paraboloid. Paraboloid. There's di two different kinds of paraboloids. I'm pretty sure we talked about them. This is an elliptical paraboloid. Uh, it's one that makes most sense to me. The other one's the saddle. I just call it a saddle. It makes it quicker. Anyways, one, two, three, four, five. And then you got this parabola coming down for each of the axes. Put a little spinner thing on it to make it look cool. And so that's at five. Again, what they're doing is they're shading this to make it look better. They're, they're using the 3D graphing stuff, which really helps a lot. Next one. 14, 1, 0, 31. So f of x, y is equal to the square root of 9 minus 9x squared. So both 9s minus plain old y squared. Um, this one's a little bit more tricky to draw. Um, but what we need to do is first off get rid of the square root. I'm going to square both sides essentially. So you got z squared is equal to all this original. I'm going to move these guys over to this side. So you get 9x squared plus y squared plus z squared is equal to 9. Divide by 9. And you should get... Uh, actually, those are going to cancel. Sorry. That should be just be a 1 right there. 9 divided by 9 is a 1, obviously. But these guys will retain that 3 squared which is a nine. Okay, so this is again an ellipsoid. Uh, but you know what's kind of funny about this in particular? If you go back, this was only the positive of the square root. So imagine we had a sideways parabola, x equals y squared, something kind of like that. Uh, and I'm like, oh, but I want to get it to something I can graph on the calculator. So I square root both sides kind of thing. And so if you remember how this works, you would have a plus and a minus version of that square root, right? Every square root needs a plus and a minus. This one doesn't have that. If it started with plus minus square root, then it'd be no problem. But it only started with the positive. So really what they're saying is that it's only the positive end of that, okay? Um, it's like they pre-did this for you, and we were going backwards to reverse that action. But yet... It only started with a positive, and therefore we must only draw uh, the positive end of it. So x, y, z. My x's are really tiny at 1, but my y's are at 3. And my z's are at 3. Again, only the top part here. So this guy, make this a little bit shorter here. And we have a little ellipse thing going on on the x, y plane. Again, they shade it. It's a little bit better. Um, see, my shading doesn't look very good. Um, but again, it's better on paper. Okay, cool. Um, so just the top half. Let me just write that down. Just the top half. Okay. Um, 14, 1, 0, 42 is a break from all this stuff. It's kind of different. So they say a uh, graph from the contour map. I don't think I spelled that right. Contour map. So let me show you what this 2D contour map looks like and what it's all about. Basically, they have some uh, parabolas here, and there's like quite a few of them. They're all kind of grouped really close. And then they kind of start spreading out a little bit. 
and there's like very very little bit different like a lot of difference between them all okay so I'm trying to get the fact that there's a lot and then it kind of spreads out this down here it says starts at 8 while this guy here is at negative 8 what do those mean and what's going on well a contour maps kind of like a map like you have um, some kind of map that looks like this and then you got another one here and so uh, what you're doing is you're seeing the heights of like two mountains here in this particular contour map you got a, two mountains and uh, so here it's a really slow slope kind of walking down and then you can walk back up kind of slowly uh, this guy right here is basically a cliff because it changes its um, its height very quickly so you don't want to go that way because you'd fall off and well you'd hurt yourself so this is the walking down kind of smooth because it's changing its height uh, only so often I mean in a way you're just kind of imagining these kind of discs that are going on out there and so these are just really big discs going on trying to make it look more like discs there you go and there's my last disc so you can see that it'd be easier to walk down this way you know versus just jumping off the cliff and so that these discs are basically our contour map here now if this was my graph and I just you know call it a day there's my axes I don't think that's what's going on uh, because uh, we need to pick from multiple choice and obviously we're not talking about two hills here we're talking about this guy so the 8 says that it's a positive it's up high while negative 8 says it's down low um, and so it's kind of like cruising down words here let me just go ahead and give you the best answer I can do this one's actually a harder one the graph so you got a lot of these paraboloids that are changing their height real fast but then parabolas but then all of a sudden as you keep going they kind of get spread out and so what's going on is that this actually ends up being a slide of some kind it's a slide I'm gonna call it a slide um, so there you go that's the best I can do if this was Y then we're going along the Y kind of sliding down it's always good to have some kind of real-world um, I guess name for it saddles slides etc this contour map same same question by the way this contour map has a straight line here and then it kind of has these um, kind of like u-shape angle things this is a zero this is at one this is at two and this is also at one and at two um, so to graph this one can X Y and Z we're definitely here in the first octant for sure everything's positive there uh, what's going on is this is straight zero flat at 45 degrees but then it kind of has these two it's going up higher up higher it's like two little hills so they're kind of like two little hills going on here I'm not, I can't draw hills perfectly they'll keep going forever but you got these two little hills here and there's another one over here it's coming up there you go and they'll, they'll keep going forever that way of course I'm just making the point that there's two hills beside this kind of like a, a flat valley or like a river kind of going on there so I'm gonna call these two hills okay awesome um, keep going now we're gonna to want to draw the contour map from a function and so I got f of x comma y uh, is equal to if I can make that look a little bit more pretty well you know what it says uh, is equal to x squared minus y squared now notice right quick this is z equals x squared minus y squared imagine for a second that y is equal to zero what do you got you got a parabola imagine that x is equal to zero what do you got you got a parabola so this is a paraboloid but because there's a minus sign between them it's the hyperbolic paraboloid I think it's called I don't know what it's called it's called something blah 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 it's a saddle I call it a saddle uh, and there's very hard to draw those kind of things 
but that's not the point here. We're not trying to draw the saddle. Uh, we're trying to draw its contour map. Okay. So to draw contour maps, you got to actually start with some kind of height. I'm going to start with zero. It's a pretty basic one. See what happens. So zero is equal to x squared minus y squared. Um, and I want to just make this into a graph. I want to draw this in 2D land. Okay. So what does it look like in 2D land? Well, I'm going to move this guy over. Y squared equals x squared. And you can square root both sides and you get plus or minus x. So essentially you get two 45 degree lines, the positives and the negatives. Okay, what about z equals one? Again, I'm just making something up. I would prefer whole numbers. I think whole numbers are probably the best. Um, so what does this graph look like? Well, what if I move this y over here? So y squared, and let's move the one over, equal to x squared minus one, square root both sides, plus or minus this guy here. Um, I don't know if that helps you, but really I think this might help more. Um, either way, you can graph this, I don't know, in a calculator or whatever you want to do. Um, but for sure this guy is a hyperbola. Hyperbola. And it's an X major. And the reason why is because it's got a plus sign for the X. So X major hyperbola. One more. I'm probably not going to do two because it might just do the same thing again. It's going to obviously stay a hyperbola. What about negative one though? Oops, that's a minus sign there. So if I start moving things around or, nah, let's just change all the signs. So it's a positive over there now, negative X squared, positive Y squared. It's still a hyperbola, but now uh, it's a Y major. Again, because it has a positive right there. So Y majors look like that, hyperbola. And there you go. There's your answer for the contour map. Pick that guy. Keep cruising. 14, 1, 0, 49. I got F of X, Y is equal to Y, E to the 6, X. It says draw the contour map again. Uh, so I see this as z equals y e to the 6x, and I start choosing z values that make sense. So what if I put a 0 there? So I have to analyze this and see how is that going to make it work? What do, what do I make? What do I do to make this thing work here? Um, well, can e ever be 0? And you would say no, because this is always a positive value, it never touches 0. So the only way to make this thing work is if y equals 0. So essentially, when z equals 0, y equals 0, what about x? What about x? What happens to x? You don't know. I mean, and honestly, it could be anything. Um, so it's kind of weird. x could be anything, but I know that y equals 0 and, x and z, z equals 0. Um, so what does it look like for y equals 0 and x equals anything? Well, y equals 0 is uh, right here. <laughs> Going way back into 2D land, it's just some kind of line right there. Um, your x-axis, essentially. And again, this is at uh, z equals 0. Okay, what about uh, z equals 1? So I got 1 is equal to um, y e to the 6x. It's kind of an interesting thing here. I'm going to move this whole e to the 6x to the other side, but I'm doing it by division. And when I do that, I actually get it to be a negative power. So again, that's in the denominator technically, and then I just say, well, that's a negative power. And so what does that look like? Well, it's uh, decay, essentially. It's exponential decay, and that's z equals a 1. I guess I could put z equals 0 there. That's fine. And of course, a negative one might be helpful. So we got a negative one is equal to y e to the negative six. Oh, sorry, positive, positive six x. Do the same thing, divide, but now you get a negative in the front. So it's decay, but then it's flipped. Um, it's got a x-axis uh, reflection. So there's a negative one. So there's your answer. Basically, it has like a whole lot of these lines going in that way. That's it. That's uh, all the problems that I have for that section. So um, if you need anything, let me know. Thank you very much. Have a great day.